Disney is in the business of being a business. I said this so many times. I've talked about this many, many times before. They are in the business of making money. Surprise, surprise, a large corporation worth almost $200 billion is in the business of making money. Color me shocked. Color me surprised. I was told by all the Griff people that it's about the message. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I guess that's not the case because we're getting some rumors now that things behind the scenes at Disney for a while has been quite different. Again, these are accounts from people that work for Disney. Disney, of course, has made no statement. Why would they? Why would they make a statement? We're probably not going to hear anything about this. we got the drama with Bo DeMeo going on right now. We have this stuff happening. We've heard stuff about really bad work conditions from Disney treating their artists like complete shit. Um, crunch time stuff, writers being told to do things differently, scripts being turned over at a rapid pace, having a very short amount of time to rewrite things before they're getting, before they go into production. That just all of these problems that Disney as a company has created, an environment that they've created, they're looking for every excuse under the sun to not take any blame or responsibility for this. And that primarily is because Disney is not inherently a good company or a bad company. It's a corporation. We have to remember there's no good or evil, but these guys on YouTube would have you believe that you're fighting back against evil Disney. Disney is a company about making money. They facilitate productions of creative visions to put out to the world. But then when you get corporate stuff involved with it, when you get art, uh, art by committee and stuff like that, you're always going to end up with a subpar product, which is ultimately what the issue is. That's the biggest issue with Disney from a creative standpoint is there's too many people with fingers in the sauce instead of letting people actually cook. That's the problem. We saw it with the Acolyte. We've seen it with other things. And now we have this, the Chud space acting like somehow, some way they understand what it's like to run a $200 billion company. None of us know how to do that. None of us know. I don't have all the answers, but from a creative standpoint, I can tell you art by committee uh, more times than not comes out a little messy. We have an article from IGN here. It's about inside out too. We have this, we have a couple video clips we're going to watch, but I want to talk about this and a couple things from the article before we get into it though. If you go into enjoy this video, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, honestly, if you become part of the team over here, hit subscribe, join the revolution, change the algorithm for the better. Hit the like, leave a comment down below, engage with my content so we can have more discussions like this in the future. Disney leadership reportedly put a large part of the failure of Lightyear down to the same sex kiss. Do you understand how brain rotted that is? That is such a scapegoat answer. We're going to watch that kiss. The runtime on Lightyear is an hour 45. We're going to look at the amount of time that kiss had on screen. And we're going to see if, if we truly believe that's the problem. La a large part of the failure. You mean the drama behind it? All of the chuddy people here on YouTube that lost their minds because they don't want to see gay people? Is that what you're talking about? Because the scene ain't that. The scene's very tiny. We're going to watch it here in a second. Continuous notes were given to the animators to make Riley come across as less gay and inside out too. That's interesting. The second part of this isn't quite as shocking to me as the first part where it talks about Lightyear. That statement is weird. Before we look at the article, let's look at the Lightyear clip and the full kiss from start to finish in an hour and 45 minute movie. Let's take a look. All right, so here we have it. This is the clip. The, the full scene is 43 seconds, but the kiss Let's look at how much screen time the kiss takes up and how important it is to the overall film. Let's take a look. Here we go. That's it. That's it. Like, th like two seconds of the movie. So two seconds of the movie was ruined largely in part because of a, a on screen kiss between two women. You want me to believe that? Explain to me in what world that makes any sense at all. What movie have you ever watched in your life where a scene less than two seconds has ruined the entire film? I can't think of one. I can't think of one personally. 
Maybe there's a lot of other factors. I remember when this movie came out, it got pretty high marks. I think the Rotten Tomatoes score, I think it was like both high for critics and fans. I think most people reacted favorably to it. The issue I think with this movie was that it was a more mature story about Lightyear that kids didn't resonate with and uh, families just didn't, the kids weren't gonna be interesting going to see it. Might've had something to do with the voice acting. Remember that was controversial too. But we're just gonna blame it on this three second kiss between two women, which it's a blink and you miss it moment. If you blink, you don't even see it. It's, it's really that quickly on screen. If we're talking about pandering and uh, using queer people to make money, this is the bare minimum. This is the bottom of the barrel. This is literally like, what is the least you can do? Checkbox, you know, check that off or whatever. That's what that is. Let's look at the article from IGN. There's a couple of paragraphs I wanna talk about. All right, so there's a couple of paragraphs I wanna speak on. This is one of them. And it says, this is people that were involved in the production of Inside Out 2. I would venture that at least 95% of the people that got laid off are financially effed right now, says one person. So again, people involved with this production are not happy with everything that happened with Pixar and the layoffs that happened. I believe it was like, I want to say 14 to 17% 17 of the workforce were let go. Outside of the financial strain of it all, sources also paint a picture of a studio that's terrified to rock the boat with some internally pushing to avoid, avoid LGBTQ themes requiring edits to Inside Out 2. It's a studio, they say, that's overly reliant on Chief Creative Officer Pete Docter, uh, stubbornly set in his ways and setting its remaining team up for more crunch in its future films. So you have work conditions not being favorable for people. And now an allegation that Inside Out 2 was basically told not to rock the boat by leaving like queer stuff out of it. So what this is going to do ultimately is it's going to give more fuel to the hate, negativity, and toxicity from the social media community to use towards queer people because it's not going to affect their opinion of Disney, right? So Disney seems to, they're courting this idea that people who follow like Nerd Roddick and Critical Drinker are just going to all of a sudden start liking Disney products again and saying they're great and falling in love with Star Wars, falling in love with Pixar, all of these things they're complaining about. However, what will happen, this is my prediction, is instead of them talking favorably about these projects, say for example, we get production information about Inside Out 3 that says they're trying to tone down more diverse things in the film. And pick anything people of color, women, queer people, whatever it might be, they're trying to tone it down. Instead of them going to the movie and talking about how good the movie is and the things they love about the movie, they're going to take those stories about how they've avoided diversity and they're gonna turn them into hit pieces against marginalized communities on social media. So instead of them talking favorably about the projects, which is what Disney ultimately wants from everybody, they're going to take any behind the scenes news and use it to attack marginalized communities. Because there's no way they're gonna change their mind about this. Even if Disney as a company comes out and says that they're doing things differently, there's still people within the company, creative people within the company, individuals within the company, that are clearly going to push and they're going to want things to be more and more inclusive. Which I think is a good thing. Actively telling people to avoid that stuff. We're not talking about bringing creative people in where their vision may not be as diverse or inclusive as others. I mean, bringing in people who may want to be diverse and inclusive and telling them they can't do it. That is not what you want from a studio. You don't want the studio meddling at all. Ultimately, you don't want the studio going in and saying, you can't do this. You can only do that. That is not the kind of entertainment that I want. It does not make good movies and TV shows. It just doesn't. There's a lot of times where shows will go on for 20 seasons, 15 seasons beyond its prime because the studios, the executives want these things to continue to make money, even though the creative vision has ended and the people behind it are like, this is the end. This is where we want to end it. But they want to push and push and keep it going. This is the kind of stuff you don't want studios doing. And courting the people who are doing this, thinking they're going to change their mind, isn't going to work. Matter of fact, Ryan Cannell, we're going to watch a clip from one of his videos, is already setting the stage for what they're going to do once Disney starts, quote unquote, unwoking their content. 
Here's a random video from Ryan over the weekend that says, woke Hollywood panics as DEI dies a painful death. Now I wanna say they've been saying this for a while now, eventually, eventually something would happen they could grip onto. So this story's come about and so they're gripping onto it. But in this video, he already sets the stage here at about a minute and 40 seconds into this video. He's already setting the stage for them to continue to be assholes towards people making diverse content. And just listen to what he has to say. Here's his, here's his actual statement. In the aftermath of 2020, everyone decided we need to be involved in every single activist thing, no matter what, no matter how many people it pushes away. Maybe some people are finally learning that. And that doesn't mean I think that the activism is going to go anywhere or that the people who want to push activism are going anywhere. But I think from an outward perspective, a lot of these companies have realized DEI is a death note. So there he is. He's setting up the fact that he doesn't believe that activists are going anywhere. Therefore, they will continue, continue these kinds of hit pieces on large studios, whether it be Disney or Warner Brothers or any other company, any other company that is making projects that includes any sort of diversity. So it was never about DEI, Sweet Baby Inc. It was never about anything that Lucasfilm was doing, what Marvel was doing in terms of like their creative visions. It is about them trying to edge out all diversity in entertainment. That is ultimately that is ultimately the vision that these guys specifically have. And I'm doing this based on their track record of content. I'm not saying everybody in their audience feels that way. I'm not saying that people that watch them necessarily feel that way. But for them, that is going to be the next movement. If DEI becomes an afterthought, if it goes away, which to be honest, I, I don't even think it really matters. It's a relatively new concept anyway. But if DEI goes away completely, and it goes back to just individual projects by directors or whatever. Do you think that means they're going to stop complaining? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. The DEI, that phrase, is here to stay. It will continuously be used towards projects, even if, say, for example, a queer director comes in to make a movie and includes a very diverse cast, and it's produced by Disney. I don't know, one of Fox, maybe, one of their subsidiaries. They will say that that is a DEI project, even if DEI goes away. Mark my words, you can, you can bookmark this video. Mark my words, they will call that a DEI project, even if there is no DEI initiative, simply because it includes diverse people. I, I'm, I'm predicting it now. I'm gonna leave out on this, but it says, multiple sources say that Disney leadership internally put out a large part of the blame for Lightyear's financial failure of the same sex kiss in the film, which briefly removed, was, was briefly removed and reinstated after an internal staff uproar in a joint statement to Walt Disney Company leadership. LGBTQ workers and allies at Pixar said leadership was censoring overtly gay affection at a time where employees were also protesting the company's response to Florida's don't say gay bill. So there was a lot of stuff happening behind the scenes at that point. But to say that that three second moment in the movie ruins the entire movie is, is not only disrespectful to all of the work from every single individual person put into that, that whole film, but it's also disrespectful to the audience to think that that's something big enough to ruin the entire movie for the vast majority of people. This echo chamber, this tiny, loud, vitriolic, toxic space here on YouTube with a lot of bullies because that's what they are, they're bullies, is not representative of the larger public. There have been lots of diverse projects over the last two or three years that have done really well. So to say that including diversity in a movie that underperformed caused it to fail makes no sense whatsoever. I could pull up a list, and maybe we'll do a video on this at some point, a list of all of the predictions that these grifty bullies have made over the years, and how many of them never came true. How many of those DOA projects were not actually DOA? It's a game of darts. It's a game of darts with them. And if Disney thinks that somehow throwing marginalized people under the bus, letting the directors and the actors and the artists, all of these people take the blame, is going to change the opinion of any of these channels, they're absolutely wrong. And they're going to see how wrong they are.